Hey, rich afternoon to all my emperors and empresses of planet Kai. Bliss be the infinite, my rock who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle, my love and kindness in my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and the one in whom I take refuge when I go within, who subdues the enemy underneath me. What is man that you take knowledge of him? Or son of man that you're even mindful of him? Man is like a breath. His days are like a passing shadow. Bow your heavens, Yehuda. Come down. Touch the mountains and they shall smoke. Flash forth lightning and scatter the enemy. Shoot your arrows and destroy them. Stretch out your hand from above. Rescue all of us that have hearts as light as a feather. And deliver us out of the great waters from the hands of foreigners whose mouths speak lying words and whose right hand is the right hand of falsehood. We shall sing a new song to you, infinite. On a harp of ten strings of the tall, we shall sing praises. The one who gives salvation to emperors and empresses. Who helped David slay Goliath. We got to rescue ourselves and go within to find what we need to find so that we have the power to overcome anyone and anything. You have to ask or command <clears throat> your gift of discernment to come through. And we got to rescue ourselves. Ashe, but the infinite gave us what we need to go within to find all the answers so that we don't search, search, search and end up in the wrong place. But we got a listening problem sometimes. It's like the ancestors always speak, our guides always speak, but it's like we're not listening. We convince ourselves that the right thing is the wrong thing and that the wrong thing is the right thing and that shit has to stop. So, that's what they mean when they say, <clears throat> most of the time it's their first thought. Start looking into that. I say, okay. All right. So, last time I said I was going to read a portion out of my book right here. And I have to actually read my son this a portion of this Melanin Empath book, so let's read it together. Alright, so I'm gonna read a couple pages. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, after, after, after I make the post video. Alright, and I, that is done already. It only takes like 10 minutes. But oh, you mean for the live? No, I got you. I could talk at the same time. Excuse me, guys, you know, 404, I've been seeing that all the time, and it's on the clock. Come here, Pop. We're going to do it together because that way I don't got to read it twice. Well, let's see one here. You send this and you use this. You use this heat right here. All right. He's going to pause this game real quick. But um, we're going to read chapter three of my book. Well, this book is called Melanin Impact. Discover the knowledge of the melanated beings born with empath energy. All right. By Jade Asikiwe. All right. So chapter three. Here go the heat pad. All right. So the presence of melanin on a spiritual level. It's true that the physical presence of melanin in your being offers immediate benefits such as 
a protecting the tissues of your skin, eyes, and cells. However, the melanin that exists within those of African descent is much more advanced on a spiritual level. It is this spiritual melanin that has the potential to change your entire life. The direct relationship between skin pigmentation and brain cells. Before the embryo becomes a fetus, the outer layer of the skin, the ectoderm, produces melanin. This melanin eventually helps grow into the brain, as it has 12 melanated centers, which are known as black nuclei. The outer layer they grow in, the blastula, becomes the spinal cord and eventually the brain. The 12th nuclei is considered the highest. This is nuclei that will begin to form the brain, known as locus curulean. Carulius. I'm sorry, me and my son was going through that the other day. <laughs> five, 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 one o'clock. When I read this, I read this chapter twice. This is the word that I kept saying, Carulius. Carul. Carul. <laughs> but it is believed that the locus, see, I know I read it. Locus Carulius is the closest human connection to spirituality and an altered state of consciousness. This is also the area of the mind that allows humans to access the dream world. It is considered that this dream world allows us to learn from our ancestors so that we can channel the creative powers of those of African descent who have walked the earth. Though we are both parts of the animal kingdom, animals typically have a lighter pigment than those of African descent. Fewer of them have pigmented sensors in their mind. Thus, they will not all be able to reach the same level of consciousness that humans can. Plants, chlorophyll, is also similar to the spiritual melanin of a human. The melanin within you always seeks greatness and is only held back by the limitations you put on it. Plants take in their melanin from the sun, also using it for food to grow. As a plant grows, it often grows towards sunlight, finding the best, brightest food source and reaching towards it. As human beings, our melanin content can also motivate us to reach the higher developed states of consciousness, learning that our true values and then using the power of melanin to manifest our worldly desires. Okay, so this page right here is the spiritual beliefs of the early African scientists and not everybody has a, a long attention span. So I'm just going to read this little section and that's going to be it and I'm going to let him take his break because he's been working for like a couple hours now. All right, so the spiritual beliefs of early African scientists. Before the time of oppression, African scientists realized that incredible connection between the melanin of their skin and the melanin of their minds. It was believed that the connection between carbon and the black melanin life force was divine, for it was within all things. Ancient Africans often called themselves various names that meant black, like Chemites, which means people of the black earth. Scientists of the time worked hard to uncover the secret inner workings of the mind, understanding the relationship between the mind and body, and eventually these scientists learned that the level of blackness of the skin was directly related to a higher level of spirituality and inner vision. Those who realized this connection realized that the divine presence is within them. They recognized that the vibratory energies that swirled around them were all the different shades of black that existed as the color of the ocean of outer space that is the universe. Dark matter is the birthplace of all the planets in the solar system. The stars in the sky, all the galaxies in the universe, 999, 999,000 galaxies, and all the living and non-living things in the cosmos. The purest presence of this carbon, this black matter, is the black holes that are scattered across the universe. These black holes are the richest source of carbon in the universe, as all they do is absorb all energy that comes their way. The role of carbon in all this has to do with the chemical form of melanin. Melanin can be thought of as a chain of carbon atoms that have lined together. This incredible chemical captures light and it has the potential to reproduce itself. Within the brain, black neuromelanin is the core of what is responsible for inner vision and intuition. It's also responsible for one's spiritual illumination and creative genius. 
The reason the melanin opens up all these pathways is that it allows you to access it, the inner workings of the subconscious mind. Within the subconscious mind lies the wisdom of your ancestors, like a timeless memory bank that has collected all the information learned by <clears throat> the knowledgeable, creative Africans that have walked the planet and learned to harness their incredible spiritual energy. And I'll pause it on that so that it can upload quicker. I love y'all, and I'm going to come right back with a part two and the continuation.